at the outbreak of Israel's Operation Cast Lead, I boarded a free Gaza boat with one day's notice and tried as the U.S. representative in a multinational delegation to deliver three tons of medical supplies to an already deceased and ravaged Gaza. But during Operation Cast Lead, U.S. supplied F-16s rained hellfire on a trapped people. Ethnic cleansing became full-scale outright genocide. U.S. supplied white phosphorus, depleted uranium, robotic technology, dime weapons, and cluster bombs, new weapons creating injuries never treated before by Jordanian and Norwegian doctors. I was later told by doctors who were there in Gaza during Israel's onslaught that Gaza had become Israel's veritable weapons testing laboratory, and the people its guinea pigs to test and improve the kill ratio of their weapons. The world saw Israel's despicable violence thanks to Al Jazeera Arabic and Press TV that broadcast in English. I saw those broadcasts live and around the clock, not from the USA, but from Lebanon, where my first attempt to get into Gaza had been me because the Israeli military rammed the boat I was on in international waters. That boat carried the medical supplies. That boat was completely It's a miracle that I'm even here to write about my second encounter with the Israeli military. Again, a humanitarian mission aborted by the Israeli military. I am now known as Israeli prisoner number 88794. I am in number five, Ramla prison. How could I be in prison for collecting crayons for kids and trying to get the crayons to them? The Israeli authorities have tried to get us to confess that we committed a crime. And while in the cell block, have access to my clothes and a cell phone, but not the crayons or any clothing that has the word Gaza on it. Zionism has surely run out of its last legitimacy. If this is what it does for people who believe so deeply in the human rights for all that they put their own lives on the line for someone else's children. Israel is the fullest expression of Zionism. But if Israel fears for its security because Gaza's children have crayons, then not only has Israel lost its last shred of legitimacy, Israel must be declared a failed state. I am facing deportation from a state that brought me here at gunpoint after commandeering our boat. I was brought to Israel against my will. I am being held in this prison because I had a dream that Gaza's children could color and paint, that Gaza's wounded could be healed, and that Gaza's bombed out houses could be rebuilt. But I've learned an interesting thing by being inside this prison. First of all, it's incredibly black, populated mostly by Ethiopians, who also had a dream. My five cellmates have been here about each. One is pregnant. They are all in their 20s. They thought they were coming to the Holy Land. They had a dream that their lives would be better. The CIA installed in Abba, President Mellis, whom I have met, put the one proud, never colonized Ethiopia into the back pocket of the United States and become a place of torture, rendition, and occupation. Ethiopians must flee their country because superpower politics became more important than human rights and self-determination. My cellmates came to the Holy Land so they could be free from the exigencies of superpower politics. They committed no crime, 
except to have a dream. They came to Israel because they thought Israel held promise for them. Their journey to Israel through Sudan and Egypt was arduous. I can only imagine what it must have been like for them. And it wasn't cheap. Many of them represent their family's best collective effort to self-fulfillment. They made their way to the United Nations High Commission for Refugees. They got their yellow paper of identification. They got their certificate for police protection. They are refugees from tragedy, and they made it to Israel. Only after they arrived, Israel told them, quote, there is no UN in Israel, unquote. The police have license to pick them up and suck them into the black hole of a farce or a justice system. These beautiful, industrious, proud young women represent the hopes of entire families. The idea of Israel tricked them and the rest of us. In a widely propagandized slip marketing campaign, Israel represented itself as a place of refuge and safety for the world's first Jews and Christians. I believed that marketing and failed to look deeper. The truth is that Israel lied to the world. Israel lied to the families of these young women. Israel lied to the women themselves who are now trapped in Ramla. And what are we to do? One of my cellmates cried today. She has been here for six months. As an American, crying with them is not enough. The policy of the United States must be better. And while we watch first Senator and now President Obama give $12.8 trillion to the financial elite of the United States, it ought now be clear that hope change and yes we can with powerfully presented images of dignity and self-fulfillment individually and nationally that besieged people everywhere truly believed in. It was a slick marketing campaign as slickly put to the world and to the voters of America as was Israel's marketing to the world. It tricked all of us. But more tragically, these young women. We must cast an informed vote about better candidates seeking to represent us. I have read and reread Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s letter from a Birmingham jail. Never in my wildest dreams would I have ever imagined that I too would one day have to do so. It is clear that taxpayers in Europe and the U.S. have a lot to atone for for what they've done to others around the world. What an irony. My son begins his law school program without me because I am in prison in my own way, trying to do my best again for other people's children. Forgive me, my son. I guess I'm experiencing the harsh reality, which is why people need dreams. I'm lucky I will leave this place. Has Israel become the place where dreams die? Ask the people of Palestine. Ask the stream of black and Asian men whom I've seen being processed at Ramla. Ask the women on my cell block. What are you willing to do? Let's change the world together and reclaim what we all need as human beings, dignity. I appeal to the United Nations to get these women of Romney who have done nothing wrong other than to believe in Israel as guardian of the homeland resettled in safe homes. I appeal to the United States Department of State to include the plight of detained UNHCR certified refugees in the Israel country report in its annual human rights report. I appeal once again to President Obama to go to Gaza, send his special envoy George Mitchell there, and to engage Hamas as the elected choice of the Palestinian people. I dedicate this message to those who struggle 
to achieve a free Palestine and to the women I met at Ramla. This is Cynthia McKinney, July 2nd, 2009, also known as Ramla Prisoner, number 88794.